Hello everyone, welcome back. And this little story we're going to talk about and look at pictures of life on the edge on Ridge Road. When Karen's parents got older and in their 80s, they had a few health issues and uh, some uh, episodes. So we decided to move closer. So we ended up moving into this house up on Ridge Road, which is just on the southern edge of Grimsby, but it's up on the escarpment. The property was on a few acres and I had a barn at the back where the uh, farm equipment and well the lawnmowers and tractors were parked. Now one of the unusual thing was the uh, up and rich road most of the houses don't have a well obviously owls are not connected to the city water so they all have a tank underneath the uh, the ground so it doesn't freeze in the winter time and where the girls are standing on there was the ad access hatch to this tank and the water usually would last about uh, two months and we had to call in and a guy with the truck would show up and uh, you fill it up and the uh, trouble was in the winter time we had to shovel a path to get to the tank but uh, it worked out quite well Now across the road, we had a big farmer's field and we're going to be uh, spending quite a bit of time over the seasons uh, following the crops, etc. So it uh, also had his ups and downs up there. There were also a bunch of pear trees who unfortunately were somewhere rather neglected, but we uh, always managed to get a decent harvest out of it. And on the bottom, the property, just put it on the uh, edge of the forest, there was a pond, which uh, in the spring was rather noisy with the frogs, etc. But uh, it was an interesting feature to have especially with uh, nature. Now when we talk about living on the edge, which basically we're trying to say it as we're at the edge of the escarpment. So as you can see, this is looking east, and you see the drop-off where the actually the edge of the escarpment is also where the millions of years ago was uh, Lake Iroquois, and that was... Um, the edge so on top of that you also had the problem that you had to go down the road to uh, get into town and that was fine and then in the summer but because it, it was quite steep but in the winter time if we had snow they would close the road down and then we had to drive uh, further south to uh, the main road, which was, uh, I guess, a fire access road, because they always maintained it and plowed it and salted it. Now, when we could see the Forsythia bush blooming at the edge of the driveway, right at the road, we knew uh, spring wasn't far. And actually, that Forsythia was blooming quite early. And uh, also, the birds kind of give us a hint that uh, spring was uh, just around the corner. Love it, spring. Now the other thing, sign of spring, was at Easter, the uh, all the raptors were turning from the south. And uh, this was uh, an area where it crossed over and went north. And uh, the uh, there's a bunch of bird watchers and we kept track of how many eagles and raptors were flying across and uh, 
Actually, there were several bald eagles, and sometimes there's over a thousand birds that they counted, so that was quite impressive. Also, with the snow melting and some of the spring rains, Old Beamer Falls was uh, running pretty nicely. And also with uh, warmer weather, it was a good time to go hike through Beamer's conservation area, go over Lookout Point and uh, check out the town from the uh, higher elevation and look over Lake Ontario and see how bad the air is polluted over the other side of the lake. Here we're looking towards, uh, I guess it's Burlington and uh, Mississauga, part of it. And spring is coming along. Trees are starting to push flowers and uh, happy days are here again. Now the pear trees are starting to bloom and uh, nature is waking up. Even the butterflies are coming out and uh, peaches, I think this is an apricot, starting to bloom. Peaches and apricots, everybody is just showing off their best. Now look at those beautiful pear trees. Everybody is trying to do each other and the bees are having a great time. Even the dandelions are out there trying to compete with the bees. And there's some more peach orchards and uh, I'm surprised that they actually prune them this late but some of the uh, workers are coming in late and even in the vineyards uh, dandelions are letting the grapes know come on time to move on get it going and this all the cherry tree is uh, trying to do his best to uh, put on a little show it looks a little wrinkly with old age However, it's time for the farmer to get cracking on his uh, farming. His whole soil needs to be worked. Well, looks like uh, the farmer's got his act together and uh, he's out there prepping the soil. And uh, moving right along, not wasting any time. And here is, uh, once the soil is prepped, he's starting to put the seed in. And sometimes uh, these guys work right into the night. And depending what crop they were growing that year, sometimes it either be corn soybeans or alfalfa. However, then the birds thought that was a good time to uh, have a little snack over here. Now the things are sprouting, the uh, crop is moving, growing, the flowers at the side of the road are uh, showing off, and uh, the lady across the street, she uh, got a grant from the government to teach people uh, or young people how to grow vegetables and so she um, grew the vegetables but also because I guess because the grant she wasn't really allowed to sell it so she set up this little booth and said oh free free vegetables and uh, surprisingly <laughs> it got quite busy at times because uh, well free food I'm sure now with the cost of groceries gone up the we will all be lining up. However, that program only lasted, I think, uh, two years, and then she, things moved on. Now, isn't that just a beautiful picture with those clouds? 
morning sun touched the top of the trees, the alfalfa is growing. Well, it's growing fast and they're ready to harvest. Now a guy come along with his cutter and he's cutting the grass. Now it is a little bit bigger than your lawnmower at home. And uh, look at that outfit. It just uh, the blade is taller than that guy. So I mean that's no wonder they could harvest in a hurry. And uh, they even had a machine to actually pop that bale. It, it was baling it and then popping it into the wagon. Now uh, this was actually a tricky shot for me because I, one thing I've learned that uh, sound doesn't travel at the same speed as the light. So basically I was getting ready. I heard the bang, but the bang was slower than, so basically by the time I hit the camera shutter, the bail was ready in the, in the wagon, so, but I discovered that my camera actually had a setting where I could take 10 pictures in a row right away, so uh, I sort of figured, okay, this should be about now, it's going to pop because there was a big bang and then the bail would fly, so I just started the camera and uh, got some decent shots, but uh, it was quite the challenge to get that picture. Now this is a quite a big load there. Now we sort of thought that the alfalfa that uh, they were growing was possibly ending up down in Fort Erie at the racetrack uh, for the racehorses. And speaking of horses, uh, Tall and small, they all get along and they're uh, enjoying their grass here in the summer as the summer moves along. And this is the actual uh, main ranch from the farmer <coughs> where they have a lot of horses. Unfortunately, uh, not all some of the farm equipment kind of wears out and eventually bites the dust and not just their farm equipment also some of the farm buildings that uh, a lot of the farmers have been uh, well some of the farmers are not doing too well and they seem to neglect the buildings now it looks like the old uh, maple tree is outliving the farm buildings and uh, of course, the biggest enemy in this part of the world is uh, the winter, because if once the uh, the building weakens and you get a big snow load in the winter, uh, it's, it's game over because of the way the snow, especially with big load. Now this guy doing his uh, once in the summer spraying, and I'm not sure whether it was a fungicide or insecticide, but I can tell you, Karen was always upset when she could smell that. Uh, poison through the air and actually sometimes he'd come at night and I also wondered whether they didn't like the people to know he was there and here's a field of soybeans and this is how the soybeans look like and they're pretty much ready to be harvested Well, now it's harvesting time. Now, soybeans, because I guess they got to be really s super dry. They're rather dusty to harvest. Well, and here Karen's looking for a pot of gold. And uh, judging by her smile, maybe she found it. Even a cat gets out there. cat like to go out in the field because that's for uh, catch mice and uh, get a good snack. And we also had deer coming through once in a while. They, uh, especially in the fall, they liked eating the, the pears and the apples that had dropped down. And now, this one day, this young woman showed up with her two ponies, and I'm not sure where she came from and where she went to. And uh, anyway, 
So in, the, in this picture, if you, I went out one morning to take some pictures of the fog, and then I looked down low and said, well, wait a minute, what the heck is that? A bunch of dogs running, but they weren't dogs, they were coyotes. And um, anyway, it was uh, one of those things you kind of think, should I stay or should I run or what should I do? But anyway, I think, well, you're not going to get that opportunity again. So I figured, well, they don't look too hungry. So I stuck it out and took some pictures. And then we also had some geese that showed up and uh, we had to deal with them. He's going to go and tell the geese to go somewhere else. There he goes, in his yellow boots. Honk, honk, honk. There they go, the geese are all walking away. Grandma has to walk faster. You hear them honking? They're honking. There's Grandpa. There he is. They were eating pears in the orchard. Yeah, lots of pears make them really fat. So they can fly south. Grandpa thought they would fly up. There they go. Honk, honk, honk. There they go, flying over Grandma's head. Oh my goodness. There they all go. Seventy-five geese had enough pears for lunch. And here comes Grandpa. Yay! No more goose poop on the lawn. Yeah, so the geese, they didn't like to be chased away, so they all came back. Well, all came back. Two came back, and they were squawking away in the morning. Well, fall is here. And uh, the pears are ripe for picking. Looks like a good year, good harvest. And Karen discovered it was a uh, pears make a great jam. Even the apples are looking cheery now. Yeah, gotta get Paul to work, picking the apples. And uh, actually, even I, I took in some for, for, to work and share it with the co-workers. Also, it's a great time to go do some more hiking before the snow flies, overlooking uh, Grimsby, looking east, or hiking up the trail. It's pretty steep in places. And the geese are gathering on the pond. Now what's unusual with this flock is they got that white one in there. And first I thought it was a swan. It was a swan doing with geese. But anyway, he somehow blended in. And the weeds is uh, ready to be harvested. It's amazing how little kernels like that get processed and return into bread and bagels and buns and whatever. And here's the uh, machine transferring the harvest onto the trucks and the uh, processing plant. And you can see the uh, fall colors are starting to show up now. Corn tassels ready to be harvested. Well, these guys are rather late, but this corn that they're harvesting there is actually for feed and uh, there's a lot of chicken farmers in the south of here and uh, I'm sure they use a lot of that. Now there's one thing that really struck me with this farming up on the field across on Rich Road is how you look at the size of the field, the amount of produce that's grown but when I add up all the days that the farmers actually was running the machines, he was not more than a week. 
between the sowing and spraying and harvesting and usually it was just one guy doing it all so you you look back in history to how the farming has evolved i mean we first traces of farming was 12,000 years ago in the Middle East and we've come a long way but it still always struck me how, how much farming really has improved look at these guys here I mean they tried to get mechanized but look at all those horses must have been a hell of a job well it all changed when we found oil we discovered oil and we figured a way to use it and then of course the uh, some smart guys that developed a combustion engine and uh, that just changed everything what took 12,000 years was all overhauled in 150 years fantastic production and uh, minimum amount of labor involved and it took a while to develop it, but uh, every year I'm sure it improved, improved, and uh, things got less labor, more production, bigger yield in the farmer's field. But you know what? We unleashed the beast, and the beast is climate change. And uh, some of the old farm equipment didn't make it. But, uh, Climate change is here to haunt us. And the old tractor, yeah, of course we get the old tractor, but we also switch to solar. And we'll see how that's all going to work out. John Deere, I used to have a factory here in Grimsby that manufactured tractors. And they stop the manufacturing but they uh, just have a big big place that's a uh, warehousing uh, parts and uh, so anyway they had a jubileum of some sort a few years ago and uh, they brought in all this John Deere tractors and of course all the tractor collectors in the Niagara region brought their tractors over now what's interesting is like they actually in the olden days even had an attachment where they have like a belt at the side there you can run a belt and run some other farm equipment on that I think he was uh, grinding in some wheat anyway this looks like the granddaddy of them all uh, pretty basic no power steering and look what John Deere's cranking out now huge equipment and I'm sure that the uh, out in the prairies they have a lot of that big gear. Well, feels like winter's about to move in. Even the old pickup truck from the neighbors there, he's just sitting down retiring. And the, uh, the fields are empty. Uh, nights are getting colder. Sky getting grayer. Birds are coming by to uh, pick up whatever they can what's left from the cornfield. Well, wind is howling across the old farmer's field. Rush the wind is from the southwest. Of course, piling it all up. The snowplow comes along. And uh, big pile there now. And you know, somewhere in there, there's a mailbox. But <laughs> no mail delivered today, so we end up doing a bit of shoving. But nature's doing some beautiful sculpturing. There's those ice, icicles and uh, drifts and the vineyards are shutting down. All the season workers gone back to Mexico, Jamaica, Guatemala. And uh, field's gone to sleep. Winter is here. So we have fond memories of the ritual property, but life goes on. <laughs>
And this is a little bit of a history of how it is like to live on the edge. So long, we'll see you soon.